Hello all, I hope you're all well. Um, so I'm just going to run through today um, the way that we use point cloud data inside of A3D to um, obviously first of all be able to model our existing sites and second of all give our customers the power to be able to actually model out and run new pipelines across their site by using the, the point cloud data that were already captured. So today we're going to be looking at this small area which has got a, a tank over here, a set of pumps and we're going to look at piping uh, from this connection over here and then run the pipe taking into account uh, the ground profile, we've got a cable tray over here, we've got about to jump over these pipes and we're going to pretend that the customer is putting in a new pump over here and we've got, we've got this new suction line basically um, and I want to take into account I see the yeah, everything that's already on site I want to be able to uh, model everything to spec I want to add in the pipe supports and then I want to finally be able to export out isometrics so I kind of want to run through the whole lot now just a, a quick look at the the area that we've, we, we, we're looking at today that the area that, that, that we were going to be modeling from, it was, a, I can't show you the whole site because it's a client site, but the area that we're looking at is about 30 scans. Now we, depending on the type of kit and depending on the accuracy and whatnot and other requirements, we are generally look at roughly capturing about 90 scans a day. And this particular area that we're looking at is about 30. Uh, so I'm going to go into uh, one of the scan positions which allows us to look at the, the, the 2D panoramic image of this particular area. There's the, the line that we're looking to tie into and we've got some obviously existing insulated lines here, cable trays and the wall that we're, we're planning on jumping over. So looking at the, the recap data which is the raw point cloud data, the first thing I'm going to do is look at just, just cropping out the data um, well, cropping the data that I just need um, because point cloud data can generally be quite large in size uh, so it's a good idea just to crop out what you need uh, so crop it out and we can go into further detail if we wanted and clip it out further so I'm going to export this out now and then um, we come back and uh, look at the next step. Welcome back everybody. So what we're going to do now, so we brought the, the point cloud data into Autodesk Plant 3D and for those who don't know what Plant 3D is, it's a 2D and 3D modeling package which allows you to produce smart PNRDs and model out process pipe work. So it's, it's specifically built around the process industry. Um, originally built for kind of like greenfield sites um, where now um, the ability to be able to bring point cloud data in allows us to model our existing sites to allow us to do like future design changes and obviously the beauty of having the point cloud data in, in it, it allows us to take into account everything that's already there and tie into existing pipe work which I'll, I'm going to show you now. So I'm going to tie into this, this existing line over here I know it's four inch I'm going to do this extract a center line from the point cloud data and it's a highlighted pink there because it's picked up on the pipe work and I've set it to a 150 pound carbon steel spec and it's going to add that line in like so then we're taking the weld net flange so all I'm doing here is, is just modeling what was already there basically I'm just going to drag this back like so, turn the properties off and speed things up a little bit. So at this point we've got our existing line modelled in. So we can now look at modelling the, the, the new line. So I think the best course of action is to put a, um, a ball valve in so we've got uh, the ability to isolate this line. And then we're going to uh, put another weld net flange on notice that as soon as we put that weld net flanges on both sides that um, it's automatically put the gasket in and it's automatically because of the spec being set up put in the bolt set as well. I'm going to bring this line down so it's, it's closer to the, the ground like so and then put in oh, another L 
bow in. Now we can start off by just modelling it in. I don't want to say not accurately, but 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 obviously just a, a little bit more rough of where we're gonna we think we, we need to put this line. Now we've, because I've got the point cloud data in here, I've obviously seen that that we've gone straight through that cable tray. So I'm just going to delete these out, bring it back, model a jump to kind of go over. And if I bring it into top-down view, I can make sure that we've given enough space to make sure that we miss that. And like I said, I'm not a piping designer, but it just gives you an understanding of, of, of the ability that uh, how much information we we've, we've got here that's that at our fingertips to to work out where we can run this pipe. Uh, jump over this. Build another jump over. Like so. Now, I'm just going to select this and make sure it's this pipe is the same height is what it was over here. Like now I want to end up over here. So run it along to roughly like that and bring it over. So are we hitting this pipe or are we going underneath it? We're going underneath it, perfect. So we could bring that a little bit closer to the wall now and then just finish this off with a ball valve and obviously we could bring the equipment in um, it might be that you want to have a, a T here so we could add a, add a T in for a lot if we wanted to do any other connections at a later date put a blind, blind flange on there um, so now we've got this I'm just going to run through and just check that I've not hit anything I might bring no I think we're alright so we can come over here now to our pipe support spec run through I'm going to add in some basic pipe supports on there so, now as well with the the pipe supports, what we can do if we wanted to, there's a lot of pipe supports here I appreciate, is one of the things that we can also take into account, because we've got the, the, the point cloud data for the ground, we can select the bottom of it, by using the F4 command we can actually snap to the point cloud data. That, so we know that, that we're hitting the ground there uh, and we, if we wanted to we could go through and do this for all of them so we've got the, the, the basic uh, model modeled out now we're going to come back and we'll have a look at doing the isometrics okay so we're going to look we've modeled out our pipe we put in a few uh, pipe supports and whatnot um, one of the things we can do now is just remove the point cloud data. Now because it's all geo-referenced we know that if I bring that point cloud data back in um, I know that the point cloud data will align perfectly every time that we bring it back in. Can you see that? So what I want to do now is obviously produce uh, a pipe support. So what I'm going to do is go say from there to here. I'm just going to select out all this, and we can give it a quick line number, demo line one, assign check that because we can now select that line 
and say add to selection entire line number. We know that it's connected everything up. And what we can do is now come over to the isometrics, produce a production ISO. There's our line. We've got the ability to produce um, different uh, isometric styles, and we, we, we customize these to our customers' borders and whatnot. Um, we've got the ability to export the table, uh, the bill of materials table into a, uh, into a comma separated value file, basically an Excel file. The ability to um, create offsets and whatnot, and even the ability to export the isometric as a PCF file. So, again, for those who don't know, a PCF file format is a text file format uh, which. Um, most commonly can be used for CESAR analysis so you can actually export this line out and import it straight into CESAR 2 and work out your part stresses but I'm just going to keep everything the same uh, the only thing I might do is untick this which basically will try to force the isometric to be onto a single file and hit create you can see this. a lot of this is, is all built in um, all really customizable so if you wanted to have your own borders, your layers, your nomenclatures, your symbols, that can all be customized by customized by us. Just give it a second. Okay, so we've got a pop-up now just to say that the asymmetric is completed. Here's the asymmetric, so we can click on it to bring it up. And here's our isometric. So there's where we've continued on to an existing line. It's got all the dimensions on here that we'd need with the pipe supports. Now I've forced this to be on a um, on a single uh, boulder, a single CAD file, um, hence why it's all looking a bit cluttered. But you get the idea. So we've got all the weld points, we've got a full bill of materials up here, and if we wanted to, we could export that into an Excel file. Now the other thing that I like about this system is that we've also got the ability to add in extra information so we've got the ability to kind of come over here and add um, extra notes onto those isometrics so we can put on here jump over uh, cable tray put that on here we can even say over here uh, we've got a location point here So there's a location point. If you wanted to, you can select it and add a note against it. And even put a reference dimension if you wanted to reference off an existing building. And these are all extras that, that, that would come through on the isometric. Um, so this is a, a, a real basic run through of, of, of the sort of things that you can do with, with Plant 3D. And like I said, I'm no piping designer or anything. Um, and I see we've got that, that isometric now that could be sent round and, and, and PDF'd up and it's just a basic AutoCAD file so nothing too fancy and it could, again could be completely customised if you want to do with your borders and your line numbering and whatnot. Um, and if someone comes back and says actually you know what I don't want you to do all these jump overs I want you to connect this up you can just model that straight in and re-export out you can really get an idea of, of, of the power of how quickly you can do this and get an understanding of exactly how much this would cost because you've got the bill of materials now in an Excel sheet and you give that to procurement.